Yeah. And, uh, and I'll just introduce everything and we'll just take it from there. I'm going to do the clap. Yeah. All right. Okay. So <laughs> three, two, one. Hello. Uh, Hello. This time we're in English because we have an English speaking guest here. Um, Patch. Patrick Pinion. Hi. Um, and we also do speak Patrick. English. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually um, maybe maybe for you. That's one of the criticisms we get that, that we that we use a lot of English words in a German language podcast. Anyway, so oh, um, right. <laughs> might as well do the entire thing in English, right? Hey, why not? Um, so uh, let's just start right off the bat. Um, you're in a band called Carson City. Um, I was in a band, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, a, a very very good band. Um, I'm actually Thank wearing you. the merch. Um, Legend. <laughs> <laughs> and in total, I believe, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you released three EPs, three albums. Yeah, um, yeah, you've actually got that right. Most people forget about the very first EP, so yeah, that is spot on. Good. Um, and then <laughs> uh, you've also toured with quite quite a bit of bands that that people might know or people here might know. So uh, on my so, list, yeah. I have While She Sleeps, yeah, uh, Hacktivist, yeah, Loathe, yeah. Uh, Attila, yeah, Whitechapel. Uh, we were meant to play a show oh, in Whitechapel in London, to. but we uh, we ended up not not being able to do that show. Ah, so unfortunately, uh, not Whitechapel. I'd love to be able to say Whitechapel, right. but no. Research Whitechapel. almost perfect, not quite. <laughs> almost. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and just to round it all off, uh, you also played UK Tech Fest and Euroblast, which I think you know. Yeah, people times. in the yeah people in the in the metalcore scene or. or Generally, metal scene everywhere in Europe should know of these festivals. I think. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know, um, all in all, a very impressive track record. If I if I say so myself. Thank you very much. And uh, by the, because of that, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. No problem. It's a pleasure. Um, and 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 we just talked uh, talked before recording that we're we're a podcast trying to share knowledge and trying to con connect people. Um, not just locally anymore. We're now trying to connect people internationally. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but nevertheless, it's 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 all about you know um, trying to figure out how we can all help each other and how how all of us can grow. Um, so that's that's also what I'd like to focus on a bit. Um, so that that sort of leads me into my my first question. Um, and I think I think you could say, or I hope you agree with me, that Carson City, at least for for a large part, was was sort of a DIY band at the start. You did a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, you did, you did a lot yourself. It literally for the first. Uh, let's see. So we formed in two thousand, the late half of two thousand seven, and it wasn't really up until twenty fourteen that we started getting other people involved in a more kind of professional capacity. And even then, it was more only as kind of booking agents or kind of general managers. Mm -hmm. A lot of the kind of behind the scenes and the production was still ourselves, including merchandise. Uh, album art, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'd say you are absolutely on the money by saying we were a very, very DIY band. Yeah, yeah, and th and that that actually makes it uh, even more impressive and inspiring what you what you actually were able to achieve. I think. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah. So so looking back at it all, um, now that you had some time to sort of reflect and 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 be away from actively being in a touring band, mm. uh, what what was your main takeaway from 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 all of that? Like, um. You know, uh, that we should have gone more serious about it a lot earlier, I think. Um, <laughs> I suppose, I mean, it's easy to say that in hindsight, I guess. Uh, obviously, in the early days, we were having a lot of fun with it. And it would, you know, it was just a couple of guys playing some music that we that we loved doing. And we didn't take it. I mean, we were serious about it. We knew we wanted to, if we could, we wanted to make it a, a lifestyle and something we did for a long time. Um, but we didn't understand fully um how to kind of do the whole package professionally and um put ourselves out there and, and progress up the ladder kind of thing mm -hmm. yeah that, that, that makes sense so um because you mentioned you you were able to involve people in a more professional capacity later on in in sort of the life cycle yeah. of the band so and i mean that just came about by us kind of playing lots of shows and people kind of offering their their, their skills to us um and we got to a point where we, we were happy to take that i think in the early days what, what i really mean is that we did put a lot of effort into um kind of getting like lights and stuff and a, a lot of people know us for our light show weirdly <laughs> and that just started off as having like one strobe light with a, a kind of push pedal um and i can't take credit for that that was actually uh louis our guitarist who thought of doing all that um and 
I think it took a while for us to be like, okay, we need a better light show and the songs need to be more better structured and more um, kind of precise in what they're trying to do. A lot of our early material is kind of like seven minute long songs that <laughs> kind of ramble on for a long time. And we didn't have a kind of very tight uh, image, so to speak. Um, so a lot of that came about later on. And I think if we could have had that knowledge of um, a kind of clearer vision earlier on, uh, that would help us out a lot. Mm-hmm. And do, do you think that that's something that, you know, as a as a or younger band should actually sit down and, and, and really discuss this, get on the same page or, or, or think about, you know, oh, let's write something like a business plan or whatever? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like you say, as a business, you need to run it like a business, really. Yeah. And if, if everyone isn't on the same page, then you've, you've got an issue there. You've got a problem that needs sorting out, really. Um, and that's not just financially. That's kind of... Uh, making sure you all kind of want the same thing out of it. Um, and not not to talk down on anybody, but a lot of our early members, we had to kind of just say, okay, you're not right, purely because they just wanted, uh, you know, just to jam or just to occasionally play a show once once a month or somewhere. As we, the, the core members, really wanted to be out there as much as possible. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's a multitude of kind of problems that you have to be very kind of honest and maybe a bit kind of brutal about it, you know, and sadly. <laughs> um, but you, you can do that without losing friends and you can do that in a, in a professional manner easily, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think that's something that we had as a theme uh, a couple of podcasts before where, where, where indeed you, you have to make sure that everyone in the band is indeed like, okay, are we going to, to go for it? Do we want to tour yeah. six months of the year or is yeah. it just like, oh no, you know, I'm fine with just playing 10 shows a year um close to where i live you know? exactly yeah exactly and and, and we we started out um, certainly me uh, louis and uh, steve who used to be in the band um all we definitely knew we wanted to really get ourselves out there i mean it's, it was in the name of the band and a lot of people say we're referencing from manhunt the game which mm -hmm. is true Carter City is a reference to that but we also liked it because it's latin for prison city and we wanted to break out of our kind of hometown oh, so we, we chose that name for the kind of dual reason there we all like gta but we also <laughs> like the the kind of the double meaning of the prison city and us wanting to, to break out of that oh, that's very 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 interesting did not know that um my, well, yeah, my, little, my little, research did not find that no bonus <laughs> trivia yeah <laughs> oh that's good um so i guess you already talked a bit about it but but what, what was something that that um came with being in a band for for those number of years that you um underestimated uh the, the the mental toll um and the effect it would have on uh just kind of relationships on the the close relationships people people had close to me um definitely a lot of sacrifice there definitely you know i was away for i think that the most brutal year in terms of touring was 2014 maybe 2015 and certainly 2016 those three years you know, I didn't uh, didn't see friends much. I didn't see the, the girlfriend I had at the time, but you know, I didn't really get to see her very much. Um, and you know, it, it definitely definitely cost me. So mm. it, it was difficult in that sense. And you also come home from tours with absolutely no money, so that the financial side was was a big thing. And I, it, it's sad to say it because when when we were younger, that definitely wasn't an issue. But that's just because we were young kids and we didn't have. The, uh, the bills and the responsibilities we had as we got older. So it became more and more of a struggle um, just to kind of stay afloat in the, the capitalist society that we live in um, because you, you'd spend money on tour. You know, you'd have to buy your own food a lot of the time and you'd have to pay for the fuel. And a lot of the time, the shows, the, the, the money we were getting paid for, the shows wouldn't actually cover even just the base costs of the fuel. Or, you know, we were a band that, uh, never really took a hotel unless it was bought for us by a promoter who would be kind, of kind enough to do it out of their own heart. And I've got pictures of me and Louis uh, sleeping in sleeping bags in the in the, the footwell of the van, just kind of sardined up, you know. Um, and just the, the long the, the long game that would have on my finances and, and the kind of the mental side of it, the mental health side of it, is definitely something I underestimated mm. at, the, at the beginning, anyway. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think that's also probably one of the, the things that let's say just the regular old fan that's not too informed underestimates you know that that touring does not make you rich <laughs> most oh, bands lose money yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely 
Yeah. I can remember I can remember seeing like Betraying the Mothers before they blew up, like to become the band they were, like meeting them and when they still had the van, like the typical van, and they like had the, those like monster energy drinks like uh, underneath underneath the seats and everything. And like and it, I think it wasn't until Euroblast, I don't know what year did they play Euroblast? Um uh I think 2017, 18? I don't know. It wasn't until the show at Euroblast uh, when I saw them that I, that I realized, oh shit those guys got big, like really big, like having the, like, like big for me is like, oh shit, you don't have the van anymore. You have right. a nightliner now. Yeah. Even, even though you're not like you're on the nightliner with a lot of bands, because that's uh, a lot of times Euroblast books whole tours for the, for the, for the festival lineup. And it wasn't that until that point that I realized, for example, portraying the mothers, oh shit. Yeah. You guys got big. Like it's, it's crazy. It, yeah, it happened very quickly. I think uh, something I did realize about the industry is there's kind of this invisible line where once yeah. you're past it, you just kind of snowball, oh. and uh, you know you just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's it's getting to that invisible line that's the real challenge, I think. And then I think once you're past that, I wouldn't say it's still. I wouldn't say it's easy by any shot, but the challenge kind of shifts from getting there to uh, maintaining it and. Um, just kind of, I mean, yeah, just just maintaining it really and keeping keeping the interest there, um, and keeping the keeping the fan base engaged, and that's a totally different ball game, I think, from the initial climb up to that point. Yeah, I I think at that point you can sort of start thinking about like uh, you know uh, generating a sort certain certain a certain level of scarcity, you know. Don't yeah. play every weekend anymore. Right. You know, just yeah, oh, no, they, you they, know, we'll be in your town <laughs> once a year, but make sure you're there. You yeah. Know? yeah, it kind of flips almost. It weirdly, it goes from right, we need to tour as much as possible to okay, let's make ourselves a bit more exclusive. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's 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 true. I, I I do think um, you have bands that that sort of reach that invisible threshold, like you like you said, and then after that, it it becomes about maintaining. Um, for for me, a recent example of that is um unprocessed um okay. they they like um i saw them book shows in like the tiniest venues uh and also in 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 vienna in a, in a very very tiny venue and and now you know if you see music videos they do now or just their online presence like whoa yeah it's, it's incredible yeah. yeah um all right so maybe, maybe let's get back to a question i don't really have a good segue into this one <laughs> okay that's um, fine I, I I saw uh, in a, in a couple of interviews you um you described Carson City as as a, as a band trying to be the or, or make the weirdest metal possible, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that you don't want to repeat yourself. Uh, yeah. and basically, just you want to be unique, right? Yeah, I, do I don't know if I, I don't know if we really achieved that. Listening back, it a lot of the stuff does seem fairly formulaic. Maybe that's just me being too critical. I think what I meant more by that is that. Uh, like in my home life, when I was back home and stuff, I actually didn't listen to a lot of metal. Mm -hmm. I do listen to metal, but not it's not my kind of primary genre. I, I listen to a lot of ambient, um, a hell of a lot of classical, um, and just, I suppose, a lot of what you call world music, just mm -hmm. kind of weird game soundtracks and just kind of obscure stuff that a lot of people probably wouldn't really listen to. And I really wanted to find ways to involve as many kind of bizarre sounds and weird uh, kind of things just to the metal foundation of Castle City. Sure, so obviously, yeah. we still have the the standard two guitars, bass, drums, vocals. But on top of that, I wanted to have kind of bongos and weird chants and you know stuff played backwards and just weird stuff. You know, as much as possible. Which these days I don't think is actually that uncommon. I think a lot of bands are doing the whole uh, kind of samples thing. But it was definitely um, I just really wanted to push that side a bit, perhaps more than some bands do i think some bands will have sections that have samples or like here's the quiet bit that's ambient whereas for castle city i wanted it to be a more woven into the actual fabric of the song kind of thing and i think we only really achieved that in the, in the later records maybe the last two records i think certainly prior to infinite unknown it maybe didn't quite get to the levels that i wanted it to um it was more kind of just sections or the odd bits and bits and bobs and a lot of it was maybe more generic samples, kind of just standard piano or, you know, tremolo guitar with a delay on it, you know, that kind of stuff. But uh, uh, certainly in the last EP that we did, I managed to include a lot of the uh, weird stuff that I was a big fan of, such as the aforementioned <laughs> chants and weird operatic vocals. Um, yeah. There's a bongo sample in there, uh, just stuff like that, yeah. 
No, you, you don't need to be that critical um, of yourself because I do think <laughs> I, I, I do think you were, you know, among the first bands that started doing that. Yeah, I mean, I suppose I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's still it's still uh, infinite unknown. As was like recently, uh, just recently, like t told people like, look, you want to have samples and and stuff in your in your thing. Listen to this album. And right. do it like that. If it's not like that, it's not. It's not right. You know, it's not sure. because that that was that was was got. I mean, what got me into Infinite Unknown was basically uh, uh, Michael, a friend of ours, uh, like said, yeah, they have a they have a song about Mass Effect, and I was like, oh shit, really? What's <laughs> what's it called? It's like, oh, I gotta listen to this, and then I heard the sample uh, like you, you put in from the game. Was, yeah. I was oh shit, I was immediately hooked. But what I realized, listening, maybe I listened maybe, to this, maybe just just really really sort of in between. Um, Thomas has released, I think, two full albums that are video game based. So, oh great! <laughs> uh, yeah, with, with my with with my other project with, with uh, Spire of Lazarus, we did Dark Souls and we did God of God of War. That's and amazing. so, well, I'm a, big, I'm a big Dark Souls fan. So, <laughs> so, but it's but it's it's tech death, so it's a bit more yeah frantic. So. Okay. <laughs> but we, but we do also uh, Julius, the, the guy who wrote the material, also works a lot with with um, uh, patterns and 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 melody lines in the background, not only like guitar work. So, okay. Um, I was I was really like blown away by Infinite Unknown, not because only of the metal side, which is huge, but because of the way because I love ambient as well I, I listened to it a lot and i was like how calming it was to listen yeah, to yeah, it has this thing in the background and like you can relax but it's it right. has so much power it comes at you like in waves like it okay. really like gets your whole body is like getting uh, yeah i don't know getting goosebumps just thinking about yeah, the like, tracks having there this was, um there was a youtube comment i forget the user now but it's the best compliment i've received and that the comment was uh, this is the most chill, heavy track I've ever heard. And I thought, great, <laughs> that's what I was going for. Like, it, it's heavy, it's got this heavy foundation, but these kind of airy, kind of relaxing chords over the top that I really wanted to get that kind of weird, um, I suppose, dynamic, what's the word I'm looking for, the kind of opposite to track kind of yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. it not 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 to crawl up your ass, but it's like the only album I've ever heard it done this way. I've never heard it done right. in, in a way that was more appealing to me. Like it, I can listen to this album, I've listened to it a lot, and I still do. And every time it just gets me. It's just like this is exactly right, like right. It's perfect. I wouldn't change <laughs> well, a thing about that's that. That's awesome, man. <laughs> that album took a long time to do as well, so clearly it paid off. It absolutely i still show i still show it to people it's like especially metalcore kids just like no you you go listen to this and then you sh and then you show me whatever architects you've got no no but first please you listen to this first yeah right that's great um but maybe maybe that's actually a a good point um so you said that that you know you wanted to, to incorporate different sounds and sort of do something you need to find your own thing um do you think that's that's actually a prerequisite these days does it help you or or is it actually easier uh, in in air quotes um to just follow a certain trendy formula um if if you want to get to a certain point what, what do you think you mean um do you mean for the bands to in order to get big they need to have samples is, is that what you mean yeah no if, if if they need to be unique and do something uh that no one else does or if they should just follow whatever the latest trend is um no not necessarily um, I mean, I suppose in the metalcore world, it, it can help to an extent. But I mean, think of a band like Hacktivist when they first started out. All they did was change the vocal style, and that was enough. Mm. You know, they had like grime vocals over. Yeah. Effectively, I know they hate calling it gem, but that's what <laughs> you know. That's what it was back then, mm. and that that was enough for them to stand out. You just need something that's a little bit okay. That's different. Mm -hmm. And you know, for Castle City, all it all it was 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 the samples really, which was the bit I I reveled in, um, and that that was our thing. And I think if if people can just find what their thing is, then it's fine. I, um, so, I mean, taking another band like Sleep Token, where oh, yeah. the, you know, their, their thing is the kind of the the ritualistic vibe of it all, uh, especially with the live show. I mean, um that's their thing and all you need is is that one thing to stand out from the crowd that little bit um and that's enough i think one of the the main major mistakes kind of 95 percent of bands are making is you know maybe not copying but 
uh, imitating a style that's maybe already five, six years old kind of thing. And I think even with even with Kansas City, we we made that mistake. Um, you listen to <clears throat> kind of pre-road journals, uh, the, the first album we did and the two EPs before that is basically just architects worship. It's basically all it is. It's just kind of tech. Uh, kind of minor, minor third harmonies, and and it and it doesn't stand out. And the, the only reason I think we were able to get big playing that stuff was because of our live show where we went absolutely nuts and had strobe lights and climbing off ceilings and yada yada yada. That played in our favour. And it was only like I said later on in our career where we thought, okay, what are we actually about here? Like, mm-hmm. what do we want our music to be and what do we want our image to be? Um, so yeah, it's 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 all about finding that unique thing and having an identity. And I think a lot of I think a lot of bands go under the radar simply because they don't have an identity, unfortunately. As harsh as that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> what what's your take then on bands that um try to change their identity or maybe even too drastically? Because you mentioned architects, you know, with their with their last album, at least at least here, <clears throat> they they got quite some backlash, you know, because they changed their sound and and, and... Uh, I, I don't pass judgment. I can absolutely understand getting bored with playing the same music over and over again. I mean, Castle City changed a hell of a lot from you listen to the Silent War EP and compare that to uh, the Affliction EP or um, you know any any of our earlier stuff, and it's it's worlds apart, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's simply because as people, you, your tastes change, and I think this relates back to fans not respecting the the music they love as people uh, as individuals they they see it as a as a product and a, and kind of like they owed it kind of thing and mm-hmm. I, can, I can understand that you know, I, I dare i say it, i didn't particularly like architects last latest record but you know i don't slate them for it i don't message them going hey you idiots <laughs> like why, are you, why aren't you doing the blurs anymore you know? yeah like, yeah it's just no, cool. I, I, listen, listen to something else. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 one of the sort of the, the almost mantras we have here. You know, if if a band put out an album you like, and then the next one they put out is not the same or something you like, that just go listen to the one you like. You know, it's Literally. not gone. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it's still there. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, it's bizarre. It is bizarre. I think people get themselves hyped up too much, and especially the younger fans. I mean, I, I know I was guilty of it when I was younger. Yeah. Um, kind of, you know, you, you have an idea of what a what an album is going to sound like, and when it doesn't meet that expectation, you know, of course, there's going to be disappointment. And I think it's a, a real sign of maturity when you can take that disappointment and just go, okay, it's not what I wanted it to be. Let's let's just focus on something else rather than getting angry about it. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it's I think it's quite immature. Yeah. Um. So. I- Maybe the last sort of um, music-related question before we uh, transition into something else, sure. um, and and keyword there is being transition because we already sort of <laughs> talked about it a bit, um, because you know you, you, every band starts out locally, right? And you you're you're from yeah. the Liverpool area, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Mer- Merseyside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how? Uh, I mean, you already mentioned it a bit, like like the transition from being just a local band in Liverpool to to like nationally and internationally touring is just touring a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, I, I mean, there's a there's, there's an element of luck involved. I, I mean, let's of course, just, yeah. let's be brutally honest here. I think uh, I think Castle City were very lucky to get picked up in the way that we did. And um, for the first kind of two years, we did play as many and every show that we could possibly take. And there was one key show. Um, down in no it wasn't Barnsley where was it I can't remember where it was now but we got picked up by a guy called Carl Sewell uh, and he just approached us and just said you, you guys were the were amazing I've never seen that kind of energy in a live performance before can I can I manage you and can I try and get you even more shows than you're already playing and it just kind of snowballed from there we were with him for a fair few years um, and you know relentlessly touring yeah is, is definitely a key ingredient um, and hoping that the right kind of person uh, is is there at a show or that enough enough kids get talking about you that the right person sees the kids talking about you and goes okay um let, let's pick these guys up and see what we can do for them mm. and there was there was, a, there was a, basically a progression of that throughout the years of us getting passed on from person to person in the industry who can get us more and more and do more for us kind of thing yeah yeah you said you, you said it was luck, and, and and I agree. It's it's a certain percentage of luck. But would yeah. you also say it takes like the 
a certain like instinct to know when to take a chance when when you get it like for example you were approached by by a guy who offered you to do you offered to do more shows with you and i at least know that i know some people who would refuse to say like no i think we're fine and everything's do you think it, it's you also I mean, need to i think that relates back to what i was saying towards the beginning where we were we were very inexperienced i mean if somebody came up to us um kind of the, these days if, if somebody let's say i wrote an album now uh which maybe i am or i'm not doing um <laughs> and somebody approached me and said hey do you need management for that at, at this point in my life i would say no but that's only because i know how the music industry works i don't need to pay a middleman to kind mm. of do that i think um those that would say no have to know what they're doing i think if you just said no because for the hell of it then i don't think that's a, that's a great choice but um i think if you if you really genuinely feel you have the knowledge um and you have the connections more importantly i suppose it's again sad to say but um if you if you really think you have all that then okay yeah fine there's there's a reason to um to not take it but at the point we were at at the time in our career um it would be, it would have been stupid for us to have, to have said no i think because we we needed we needed that lifeline to break out from because we, we'd already kind of conquered the local scene, so to speak. You know, we were the, the only kind of metal band within Liverpool, at least, that were kind of doing things outside of Liverpool. Um, so we'd already broken that barrier, and I think to break the, the bigger barriers, you do you need a you need a helping hand. You need pulled up mm -hmm. from somebody who's already up there, you know. Um, which is, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of musicians hate the way that that, that that's how it works, but unfortunately, in the kind of commercialized industry of music that that is the way it is unfortunately so so, so yeah. yeah you're right it's, it's a percentage of luck and mm -hmm. but you know there is there's, there's a percentage of you know making sensible choices as well i think so knowing knowing when to you when to take help and knowing when to refuse help yeah, and, and when, where, when to do it yourself do okay yeah, definitely mm -hmm. Mm. I, I don't think that's that's a major thing um, here in Austria as well, because, you know, booking shows in your hometown or in your home area is not usually not that difficult. But trying to get to play a different city where you don't have those contacts yet, you know, exactly. if, if, you, if you don't have that lifeline or connection, then it's going to be difficult. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that that's that's also something where I think, you know, uh, UK Tech Fest or or um, Duroblast and and I mean Simon and 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 John are amazing in in finding those bands and offering Absolutely. them them that help to play internationally even that's I think that's, well, that's Simon Simon was one of the guys who offered his help at, at some mm. point down the line after after we'd um, kind of moved up a few rungs on the ladder so to speak sure, yeah and and eventually we left Simon for someone else who was hiring oh, of course, yeah. yada 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 but yeah no both both Simon. And, and John have been uh, really uh, key members of, of the scene. I think yeah. definitely, I absolutely. Think, I think Simon still drives bands around, right? Does he still? He does. Yeah. That? yeah, he does. We, we, <laughs> talk, we did a we did a few tours, uh, maybe one or two tours with him when he was driving yeah. other bands. He was driving Neck Silver for one of our tours. Yeah, he was, he's a good he's a good laugh. <laughs> he is. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, but um, I also wanted to to invite you and talk to you because uh, it's 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 not just being in a band and being a musician. Uh, you you also do some amazing visual art. Um, so anything from from album covers, posters, uh, I, I guess any anything you can print, uh, yeah. but also logos, t shirts, uh, all yeah. those type of, type of things. Yeah. And um, you even did the last called the mothership. So uh, I did, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and we were so happy with it. I still am. I still have it as a sometimes. I still use it as a as a desktop background. Right. So because I like it so much, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I felt I felt a little out of my depth with that one. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this crazy sci-fi stuff. So it was a challenge for sure. But I'm glad you I'm glad you liked how it came out. I liked it. It's amazing. It's like Thanks. yeah, really, really loved it. Thanks. But I mean, you know, going back to that, your own band, Curse of City, always had amazing art. Of course, you know, if if you're if you're able to do that, you know, you are going to use that for yourself, sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, do Do you think, uh, like, having that sort of visual representation and having a a, a certain style was was important, like, had to have that visual aesthetic going? Was was that? I guess so. I always feel that Curse of City's aesthetic was a bit all over the place in terms of kind of looking back at some of the artwork. <laughs> Um, because we always we we were always 
wanting to be, like I say in the early years, we always wanted to be, oh, let's be like this band, and then, oh, no, let's be like this band, and then, oh, let's be like this band. So I'm glad you, I'm glad you think there's a bit of consistency there, because I always look back at the, the album artwork, and I think, oh, I wish there was a bit more consistency there. Uh, yeah. I mean, sure, it became more consistent towards the end, but that's also right. when, you, when you already said, like, you know, that's when you started to take things more seriously, and so on. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah I, and I, I, think, I think, I think, I think it is important to, um, to, to the younger bands just starting out kind of lay out um, a kind of a roadmap almost or, or like a, maybe a bullet point of like these are the themes and these are the styles we really want to kind of uh, focus on I suppose or kind of put together to make this kind of you know style yeah mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, if, if, if you're designing stuff for yourself, that's that's easy because you know what you want or, or you have a good connection to your bandmates and, and you know, it's easy to communicate with them. Um, but you already said you did a lot of work for other bands as well or even other brands. Um, yeah. So what, 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 are, what are some of the do's and don'ts you've, you've um, learned being on, on, the, on the, you know, the executive creative side? Uh, you, the do's and don'ts as in like... What, 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 what bands have told you or, or, or you know, clients... <laughs> Okay, uh, so do you mean like if, if someone was going to approach me, what would I want them to do and what not to do kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the most important thing, uh, which I've got to say about 80% of clients do not do, is give a, give a clear, concise, detailed brief uh, as, of what they want. Because a lot of people will message me like, oh, hey, dude, we were having some merch designs. How much do you charge? <laughs> and it's like, well, I mean, there's a lot of factors you know, we have to consider here. I mean, yeah, yeah. do you want a complex design? Do you want a full-size back and pocket design? Uh, how many designs do you want? What kind of style? Uh, do you want lots of different colors? Do you want one color? Uh, you know, there's so much that needs to be included. And I actually recently got a great brief that um, not only provided uh, kind of Im already had images of like we like the this kind of visual style and these are the themes of the album so we need this and this and this uh and you know here's our high-res logo already sent to you <clears throat> and incorporate that into the design great and if you're going to do that up front i can that means i can bring the fee down because mm -hmm. i then don't have to spend time sending emails back and forth like do you want this do you like this can you send me images of what you do and don't like and yada 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 and I have to be paid for my time and time time costs so if you want to if you want to help yourself and you want to help me the best thing you can do is really understand that i need to have a, just as good an idea that they have of what they want and in order to do that you need to communicate that as clearly as possible and I, I know I know that can be a challenge for maybe someone who doesn't use the software or doesn't understand the process behind the the creation of it. Um, but I think just just being able to really communicate what what your vision is, even if it's not using jargon, even if it's not using kind of complex um, language, even if you can just give a, a a vibe of what you're after, that that's enough to get started. You know, and a lot of people miss that. A lot of people just just think I charge a flat rate for things, but everything, everything is bespoke. Everything yeah. is, well, if this is going to be a complex project, then, you know, so on and so forth. Take all the mothership, for example, who wanted, you know, a front yeah, cover yeah, yeah. and an inside alphabet. Thing, we want you to design there. an alphabet. They had, a, they had law behind it, but they provided yeah. all that up front, so it was mm -hmm. fine. It was absolutely fine. Yeah. Whereas some bands just won't do that. And that is yeah. a, bit of a, a bit of a nightmare to work with, yeah. I, I, I think a key point you mentioned, and that's something, you know, because cause I'm, I'm more, I, I don't play an instrument, I'm not in a band. Um, right. Even though I have a bass there somewhere. Yeah, you um, do play bass, so they'll <laughs> say you don't play an instrument. So. No, but I, I'm I'm more of the um, okay. I, I'll 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 do an album cover, or I'll take some photos and 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 do the videos and all that, all that. But I I I think the key point you made, and that's something that that I haven't communicated well myself, is all the time spent researching and emailing back and forth is not time yeah. I am actually working on the design in your mind, but I am. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's still time that 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 needs to be charged and and that's and paid for. That's a that's a good point. And yeah. and yeah, you, uh, as as you mentioned, call the mothership. Uh, I have to say, Jörg, because <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we we didn't do shit. Uh, we just <laughs> okay, we just fine. gave feedback. But he he no he he's really a guy who knows how to communicate, how to actually give the artist 
an idea on what to do and this is like for all the austrian bands listening like if you want to know how to approach an artist talk to jörg and then approach the artist because he can tell you <laughs> what the hell to do and it's like i learned through him for example how to approach people with that because i didn't know at first so he was just like yeah here are some images uh, of what it should be and i was like really just from the internet like like random and then i realized yeah but what the hell else should you do it's like yeah. draw draw the fucking thing yourself and send it <laughs> yeah, like, right. this is what i want it's like yeah, no I mean, and, to be honest some people have literally just sent me a pencil like they'll say i want a logo and i want it to kind of have this kind of form but i'm rubbish at doing it i just need this professionalized you know and that's that's fine that's that's absolutely fine as well but i mean york was an absolute pleasure to work with yeah his, his his communication was was on point definitely he provided me with a whole uh kind of catalog of you know <laughs> stuff like here you go which is great it's just which is great yeah yeah and and i mean by extension that also works in anything else you want to do as a band right if you're writing a producer to help you produce your album make sure that yeah you've, you've, i sent um you guys know um um, and Hermidovic, uh, who uh, he he mixed and mastered the Infinite Unknown album, mm. and he's recently got really big with his Eurobass uh, <laughs> plugin, and he's he's mastered Dark Texas record ever since. But I sent him, uh, I think it was like a seventeen-page uh, notebook <laughs> of like things I wanted. And I suppose at the time I thought, God, I must be annoying the hell out of this guy. And I hope I didn't, Ermin, if you are listening. <laughs> but uh, I, I would have hoped that that would have actually sped up the process because instead of him sending a mix and us me going, I oh, can you change this and he goes back, has to mix it, send that. And then I go, oh, actually, can you change this? It's a lot easier to just get, listen to the whole thing, write a whole thing in as oh, yeah, much detail as possible, um, and then just say, that's what I want. You know, just just as simple as possible. If we can cut down the time of that kind of back and forth communication, then that's that's great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the, I I think a lot of people can improve on that. Yeah. Um. Something, something else. Uh, if I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was 2019, 2018. Um, you've been on tour with Monuments. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. Um, best, best tour, and it wasn't even with Carson. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 you are you weren't like a backup guitarist or a tech or something. You were there as no. as basically a content creator, right? You, you were there I, for for keeping a video a video diary. No, 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 no. I was the no. merch guy. Oh, the merch guy. <laughs> Oh, the, the merch the, guy who the, also the, happened to do some video. <laughs> no, the, no, the video guy was a guy called Doc. He's a good friend really? of mine. He's from he's from a band called Red Enemy, or was from a band called Red Enemy. He's now mm. in a band called The Scratch, who are doing really well. Uh, yeah, Connor Dockery, go and check him out. He's really good. He was doing all the video stuff there, oh, so I, I can't I, I can't take credit for that. I was oh, I, purely oh, yeah. okay. a merch guy. <laughs> See that, that and, that's, and, and but... laughs. I was the laugh guy. All right, all right. <laughs> no, but still, you know, that's that's also people that you need. You know, that the, everyone yeah, I mean, everyone helps out. There's, still, there's just a touch on that. There is still relevant skills we can talk about there because no. a lot of bands, um, you know, they're great on stage, but then when they come to the merch stand, they're just kind of quiet and meek, and like, yeah, hey, what t-shirt do you want? Whereas, something we realized very early on with Castle City, me, me and Louis, was that you have to really engage with the fans both off the stage and on the stage. And, you know, we'd be at the merch stand and we'd make ourselves available. We'd reach, hey, dudes, yeah, like reach reach out to people, talk to people. And, I mean, it can be tough. It can, that can be hard when you're not in a great mood or you've got stuff going on at home. And this is getting back to what I was saying earlier about the, the, the mental health side of things. Is Sometimes you do have to put a bit of a mask on. Sometimes sure. you, do have to, you do have to put on the old smiles and happy faces when you might not necessarily be like that. I know there were a few shows where my voice was absolutely destroyed and i was in pain you know but i still had to because i was the front man i still had to be there on the merch stand and make my face shown and really get really engage with the fans um and i suppose this is again getting back to that invisible line obviously mm -hmm. when you're in a bigger band just get a merch guy to do it you don't have to do that thing but i think when you're when you're when you're smaller i think that that engagement with that real personal connection with fans is a big uh, driving force to uh, loyalty to to interest um and i think a, a lot of people a, a lot of kind of repeated compliments i've heard from fans in the early days was that are oh, they really interesting cool people they, you know they'll come and talk to you at the match stand and they, they'll respect you and have a good chat with you and stuff like that and i think that's that's really valuable to people to not only connect with the music but to connect with the people behind the music as well so i think that was important yeah i, I have a good anecdote for that Go so for um 
I, I hadn't heard of you uh, prior to actually going to Euroblast uh, okay. 20, 2016. So I think that was the second time you played. Was that the, that was the big stage or was that the little, that was the little stage? A little stage, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and, and, you know, as you do, when you go to a festival, you see the, the lineup and you just, you know, click on most popular song, you listen to it. And I, I was like, okay, these guys sound interesting. I'm definitely going to check them out. And okay. that's, that's when, when I was, I was amazed by indeed your light show and everything. It, it sounded really, really cool and fresh. So I was, I was a fan and I was okay. very, very happy to find out that like two or three weeks later, you were playing in Vienna in a small venue yeah. that, that, right. um, that's no longer around anymore. Uh, it's called Taspach. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, but you were there. I obviously went because I wanted to see you again. I had a great I remember, time. I remember speaking to you there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and 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 that's that's actually a, a a testament to to you and what you said. Like you need to reach out because I wore this shirt, and, and I, I was just standing in the crowd. And all of a sudden, you come like walking by, and I'm like, oh, you bought it at Euroblast. I was like, yeah. Cool. This guy knows I was there. That's good. good. And we started, to, yeah. you know, to talk and, and and to engage. And I, I, you know, I was I was even more hyped to to have seen you and, and heard your music that's and everything. Sweet. So that's and now here we are. Yeah, and here we are. A couple of years later. I remember being at the show as well. And I've, I didn't talk to you uh, or didn't buy merch at Euroblast, but when I talked to you in, uh, in the show uh, at the show at Bach, um, I afterwards went went to the merch and bought the CD. I still have it. <laughs> so this it's like this, I completely agree with Peter. This was just a, it was like the moment of like okay let's find out if this is a nice person and i already knew you were but it's just like okay let's let's just sometimes and, <laughs> sometimes. and, and yeah it was it was uh, like really like okay this is such a cool person to talk to and it's, it's yeah. not not only the appreciation for the art as well but it's the appreciation for everything like because yeah. i know like doing that after a show talking to people who you don't know who maybe had a few drinks too much or something yeah. like this and still having this like engagement with the fans that that's incredibly hard sometimes and yeah. and i can remember you being like every to every single person you took the time and it, yeah. you made the effort and yeah that's amazing yeah and that, that was a dimension of that like i was saying towards the beginning of, of the podcast about that whole package that a lot of bands don't think about they just mm -hmm. think about the songs or the live show or maybe a few aspects but there's a whole spectrum to this to this package that people don't um fully comprehend and we were lucky that quite early on we realized oh we need to engage with fans we really need to like connect with them on a personal level so to, to the younger bands or the bands starting out there make sure that you're definitely you know connecting as much as possible with people both through social media and at shows face to face in fact especially face to face i think that's probably yeah. even more valuable than the, than the the kind of the cold front of social media yeah yeah absolutely um actually my my my, my last question you've just answered you know like the, oh, one, the one thing <laughs> the one main piece of advice you'd give so i think people can just rewind 20 seconds and and, and listen to you again <laughs> sure yeah <laughs> um, uh so, something something else we can do is a last question something that we we usually like to do uh if if you have your your dream lineup for for a one night show uh, give us, give us uh, three bands, and and you know, as an added bonus, Carson City is playing as well. That's just for me. <laughs> okay, so Carson City and three other yeah, yeah. musicians, shall we yeah, say? Yeah, sure. Yeah, musicians is fine as well. It, it doesn't even need to be one genre. It could be something really weird. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. Let's go really sporadic here. Okay. Uh, we would have. Uh, well, I'll pick one metal band, and I'll just go for the Ghost Inside purely because they're they're a, a classic band from when I was younger that I still jam to this day. <laughs> Absolutely love purely for the simplicity, the melodic hardcore. <laughs> Great, it's a good laugh. We can have a jump around to that. Uh, I would then have some kind of orchestra from somewhere in the world playing the the Bloodborne soundtrack. Um, I don't know if you guys have listened to that. Give it a spin yeah, if you have. Yeah. Oh, I haven't. Um, and then I would have uh, a, a, a band, or I suppose it, it started off as a solo artist, but became a band uh, called Tycho that do um, kind of very melodic, ambient, electronic uh, music. It's hard, it's hard to describe, but I'd have that's what I would have. I'd have them open, then I'd have the ghost inside. Everyone would go wild. Then I'd have a spooky hour of bloodborne music, and then and then us. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 very interesting we, we have to give the we have to up the ante with the challenge for other people now no longer okay. just metal bands just go crazy because that's a that's yeah. a really cool cool collection of artists there <laughs> um, it, it's 
It's funny because because I because I know Taiko from YouTube because having this ambient <laughs> playlist like Taiko comes in with, with stuff. I think uh, what's what's it called Dive is is the album Dive. Dive. Yeah, yeah. That, that's his first full length album, I believe. Yeah, that's that's the one. That's the one of because I just had to look it up because I have this in my. Uh, I listened to Awake uh, later, but that's, I, that's I found, my favorite album. Yeah, Awake. I found I found Dive was somewhere in this like like all the ambient album, and then it was Taiko, and I was like, oh, this is good. It's like like. Up, like looking up and studying, so it's like, music, yeah, yeah, that's cool. It's nice. Yeah. All right, um, Thomas, do you have any any last questions? Any last thing you want to ask or say? Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> like millions and nothing is like it's like basically the the only the only thing the only thing I would have would want to ask is how where did the idea for sovereign come from to include this particular mass effect bits like so the the overarching theme i really wanted to get um across the whole album of infinite unknown was the very kind of the big existential questions and something like something that really hit me uh, with mass effect one and the thing that really got me into the series was how it, it kind of develops from this very small story and then just explodes when you when you meet sovereign and talk to him and he says you thought you were just chasing this one little dude but we are this huge cosmic threat that even makes you wonder why you're even bothering to <laughs> try and fight him and what i love about that is is the parallel that I had to kind of life in general and the kind of why why do we exist why are we doing this and what is the what is the kind of meaning of this all so sovereign meeting sovereign and the themes of the album just seem to kind of link together in a very kind of convenient way and then i thought all right let's just make a really heavy song with a sovereign <laughs> sample in it let's do that and that was it that's all it was and you know what i didn't even consider it as a, as a single when i first wrote it i only wrote that as the token heaviest song yeah. uh, for the album kind of thing and it was only when the boys heard it with with the vocals, admittedly, and that kind of chorus at the end and the, the breakdown in the middle that they thought, this is actually quite one of the more unique songs on the album and probably one of the stronger ones. So we should probably release this as a single. And I happen to agree with them. So <laughs> that, that's, where, that's where the inspiration came from. It's a very, very one great of my, track. One of my favorite songs of all time, like period. It's like <laughs> amazing. Thanks, <laughs> cool. Thank you for the answer. All, all right. Um, so I I think if we don't have any I mean do you have anything you want to want to add if if, if else uh, I guess if people want to check check out my visual art they can check me out on Instagram uh, it's P Pinion Creative um, I guess that's it I have a link tree as well link tree PSD Pinion if you want to see my other stuff such as my Skyrim mod or my personal Instagram anything like that please do check out please do send me an email if you want me to do some artwork for you I'd be absolutely happy to do so and we can. You, send, you can send me a nice brief. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll 17 pages. <laughs> 17 yeah, pages. Right. But that's uh, it. And uh, just, just thanks for having me. Thanks for asking me to come on. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Um, and indeed, all the links will be in the in the you know description, as they say. Uh, awesome. Um, so we'll we'll make sure that people can find you with just one click. Um, all right. And then, yeah, I, I can just vouch for you as an artist as well. I mean, it, it everything you do has a very um, unique style to it, and it, it I I think I can mostly recognize something. Oh, that's something that Patch probably did. Okay. <laughs> or would do. Yeah. I think you have a very unique right. style, and and it looks amazing. Thanks. So, Thanks, man. Uh, with that, thank you for your time. Um, and I'd also like to thank one of the, uh, the the support partners we have. It doesn't mean a thing to you, but we have a very, very good uh, music store here called Klangfarbe. Um, so uh, for all the people that might be listening for the first time and are happen to be in Vienna, go check that out. Uh, so Klangfarbe. And um, yes, other than that, have a nice day, evening, whenever, and stay big. <laughs> all right, peace. See ya. Bye.